Hi there, welcome to the next episode. Um, this is the painting I want to talk about today. It, I went up to Rivington Pike, Rivington Terrace Gardens in Bolton um, over the weekend and I went up to the Japanese lake. I took up um, easel and um, tripod and all my stuff. Um, I didn't take all lots of paints and the canvas. I did take my sketchbook though, but I wanted to see how much I could actually carry to get up there um, for future expeditions, as it were. And I have actually invested in a lighter tripod and a lighter um, easel, aluminium ones, because my shoulders really hurt by the time I go up there. Um, as you can see from the following videos, the Japanese lake wasn't at its best. The, the water was so low because of the summer that we've just had. And the water, it was also a strange muddy colour, which is what inspired the um, oranges and purples, oranges and blues in the painting. Um, but it, it's still a magical place. It's the weirdest thing. You go, you're walking up a hill through a woods and you come across like brickwork features anyway. And then you go over a little, or go through a tunnel and you're at a lake halfway up a hill. It is the most random thing, but it, it's, it's man-made. It's not like a natural feature. I'm sure they've used natural rock formations to help the process, but it's it, it's all like been built. Um, but it's a it's a wonderful place to go and explore because there's so many little things to find as you're walking around the woods. Um, so this is my painting for Rivington Terrace Gardens, at the Japanese Lake or the Japanese Garden. Um, have a look at the videos of the actual place and then at the end I'm going to do a short little bit about how I actually painted it. So I'll see you in a bit. Here's the signpost up to the lake or down to the terrace. We walked up with Gwyn. Path down, back down to the car park. And here we are at the Japanese lake. You can see straight away how low it is. And the weed coming through that probably is normally on the bottom of the lake. It's that structure though. Oh, ducks. These came floating through the weeds, ready to see if anyone's got any food. That, those structures though, they're just crazy. I don't know who would even contemplate building this halfway up a hill. It is absolutely magnificent. I did have a go at doing some sketches here. What I was trying to do is, I wasn't actually trying to do brilliant paint pictures. I was just trying to um, get information down to inform a painting. I find that when I sit and actually sketch somewhere, sometimes the sketch turns out to be absolutely rubbish. But the information that I gain from it and the knowledge that I gain of the area whilst I'm doing it, it helps me form the image in my head. So if I do a, a tonal sketch to see where the darkest areas are and the lightest areas are and then do a colour sketch as well it, and play around with colours, play around with ideas in a sketchbook. When it comes to actually painting it, it makes it a lot easier. I just wish I could paint this fast in real life. There's so much more done. There were loads of dogs there as well that day. 
and one in particular was called Holly. We, we knew it was Holly, called Holly because all we kept hearing was Holly, Holly, Holly. It was quite funny really. We had Gwyn with us and my husband Mark was trying to sleep with Gwyn behind me, he brought a blanket, had a lie down. And of course, there were so many other dogs coming to visit that she had to try and say hello to all of them. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get her to the point where we can take her to places and let her have a little snooze or a, a sit down. And she gets used to us stopping. We want to go for walks and be able to stop. She'll, she will do it if we're eating, if we go and stop at a restaurant or something like that or a cafe or a pub and we'll sit outside. She'll settle down then, but just settling down for no reason. She can't see the point in that. It's ridiculous. But that's what we're trying to teach her. We're trying to teach her that sometimes we will just stop and she's allowed to stop as well. So here I'm playing with the colour in the bottom one now. I'm just trying to work out how dark I need to go, what colour can I play with in the water. And at this point I actually decided that it was that orangey colour in the water that I was going to look for. And then I started thinking about the blues and purples in the islands as well. The sun kept coming out and that's when I managed to get some really nice shots of the islands in the sunshine, which I'll post up here. <laughs> Little dog in the background again. So as you can see, they're not brilliant sketches, but the information along with the um, photographs that I took were just exactly what I needed to be able to do a full painting and that's the whole point of it. I was actually quite nervous about starting this um, painting. I'm always nervous when I start a painting with water in. I love painting water because it's such a challenge. Um, it's very easy to paint something that just doesn't look like water at all. And I'm never, ever happy with the way it turns out. And I think that's why I enjoy doing it, because I'm never happy with how it turns out. <laughs> I think in this particular case, it was the otherworldly energy of the whole thing that I wanted to capture. So the water was a little bit of a, it's in there, but it's not the main feature or anything. Rivington Gardens themselves, I've been inspired by them for many years. I remember going up there with my family when I was very young, um, walking up through the terraces and finding all the little brick pieces which I might do in other videos and thinking this is amazing this is crazy I mean and so much so that when we bought a house me and my husband bought a house um, with a back garden at like a 45 degree angle what might have been less than 45 but it felt like a 45 degree angle I actually was inspired by the, Jap uh, the terrace gardens at Rivington to terrace it and put paths going up and then plant it really thickly so you can walk through the paths. Um, so it always stuck with me. It's one of those places that if you go as a child, it definitely sticks with you. It went into disrepair for quite a while. And I think they've, they've done so much work, so much conservation work reviving some of the features and looking after the paths, making it safe, but also uh, 
in keeping with nature as well. They haven't like spoilt it at all. It's still amazing. And they're trying to keep on top of the um, uh, rhododendrons as well, which is good. Rhododendrons aren't very good for the um, nature and environment when they get out there and spread. So this is the painting that I actually did once I got back to the studio. Off we go. So as I've already said, I was actually quite nervous about painting this one. So I thought the best thing to do would just be to lay out where my deepest shadows were and get that circular energy going round the canvas that I wanted to bring in to make it feel more magical and otherworldly. I got the oranges and the purples and the violets and stuff in quite early and then started working on those ripples in the water. What I'm actually doing here is I'm covering the whole thing in a glaze, Main, uh, firstly to make sure there's no white bits so it's actually covered and also to almost seal the bottom layer. So I can paint, I know acrylic you can do anyway, but there's something about using that um, medium in between layers that means the layer sits on top of it better. Um, I just prefer it that way. And then I started going back into details. Um, I started bringing highlights out in the branches. Started to give the trees a bit of form. Uh, always work, trying to work on reflections at the same time to keep the reflections um, balanced. And then just making sure that water has got a top edge so that the background doesn't fade into the water. And there's also a, pot, a patch of pond weed on the far side that I had to contend with. Working in some shadows, making sure I've got my tones right, right in the dark bits, and then the highlights. I find once you get tones and hi uh, highlights and shadows in, everything else starts to fit together. This was a fence in the, I just wanted to, an indication of the fence in the background. More work on the water trying to get those colours right, making sure those islands look like they're sitting in the water, putting some detail of the brickwork in the background. That's that weed that I just want to make sure is sitting on the water in the background. Working more on that back wall. I tend to work from the back of the painting forward. So I'll do the background, anything in the background, and then work forward. It's what's sitting on top of what. So I ha I've done the front of the water, obviously. I'm not going to do the front of the water without doing the back of the water. It's all one piece. So. There we go. Just making sure those these little brown marks are in they were like twigs or branches or leaves or something on the bottom of the water that you could see because it was so low working a bit more into the trees a few more highlights on the bricks at the back Getting the detail in on those bricks. And then start working a little bit on the plants and the weeds and the foliage that's on top of the bridge at the back. It's not really a bridge, it's more of a folly, a cave folly. Few more plants. I'm getting close to finishing the background now. But I'm just 
making sure everything's the way I want it. There is a, a, an area of blue that I want to bring down the right hand side of the painting. The area of blue coming down that side. Now we start working on the islands, Highla um, defining the bricks, defining all the structure, the cracks in the rock, keeping on top of the reflections, shading that side, Making sure you, the light's coming from the right hand side all the time. Keeping in control of those reflections and the shadow. A little bit more on that blue edge coming down there. More detail and defining of the rocks in the islands and then working on the foliage actually on the islands a few more little details and it's done we had a little bit of a lie down in the uh, field behind the van afterwards it was a lovely day and as you can see a few clouds in the sky and then, whilst we were lying there, thoroughly enjoying ourselves, we heard a drone sound. And it was um, a model airplane. And it started doing tricks above us. So I lay there for a few minutes and just watched it. It was very relaxing, actually. The noise put me off a bit at first because I was quite enjoying the peacefulness. But then, actually being able to lie down on my back and watch the plane soaring around knowing that it only has a very small petrol tank and that it can't stay up there for very long i just enjoyed it i enjoyed watching it and it did manage to stall unfortunately but came out of it i was quite worried actually when it stalled i thought oh my gosh is it uh is it going to crash? But it didn't. It didn't crash. Obviously know what they're doing. Oh, it's stalled. And off it goes. So all in all, it was a brilliant day, loved it. There we go. It's the Terrace Gardens at Rivington. They are a bit strange. Um, thanks for watching again. If you've not subscribed yet, please do. I'm, I'm nearly at 100 now. Um, and I know it's only a little thing, but, you know, it's what keeps us going, isn't it? So thank you very much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye.